Let's start. Oh yeah, sure. Good evening, one and all. Uh, we are going to learn today about the pulmonary function test. Of course, pulmonary function test, how to read pulmonary function test by a physiotherapist. So before we start uh, about the pulmonary function test, I would like to know, I, I'd like to tell every participant about certain small rules. In between, uh, whenever I'm giving the lecture, in between, I'll be asking you certain questions, kindly answer in your chat box whoever is knowing and whatever you are knowing about the answer, I mean, you can. And then other thing is, other thing is like, uh, you have to, uh, you have to wait for the turn. Whenever I'll be asking your doubts, you have to tell that time only. Apart from that, kindly mute yourself so that uh, we don't have any kind of background issues and I am sharing that document just one sec I hope everybody can see that document yes sir yeah, thank you so much, sir. So it's a pulmonary function test. How to interpret this? So we will be learning this all three uh, through certain, uh, uh, of course, certain uh, like this this series. We will be learning about first is the introduction, what is this, and then then we will be talking about spirometry, and then of course our lung volumes. Then DLCO, what is DLCO? We'll be talking about this today. And how important is this when we talk about any sort of spirometry test, I mean, sorry, PFT test. And then at last we'll have a summary and we'll have at least minimum two case discussion, the case I'll bring and then we'll have a discussion, no worries. So as we know, like uh, the abbreviation, PFT is an abbreviation of pulmonary function test. We have to understand what is the purpose of PFT? Do we, do we do PFT just for the checking out only the gaseous exchanges diseases like chronic? What about certain vascular diseases like pulmonary vascular diseases? Then we have certain kind of P PFT, types of PFT. We have a general PFT, we have a standard PFT. We'll be seeing that just now. Then we'll be talking about major categories of chronic diffuse lung disease. Then will be trying to understand various subdivision of lung volumes. Light, light, light. Sub subdivision of lung volumes. Okay, so what is the purpose? The purpose is, of course, diagnosis of symptomatic disease. Then diagnosis of asymptomatic disease at early conditions, okay? And then of course we can have a prognostication of the known diseases when we do test through the PFT. Then we can have a monitoring response of the treatment. This is looking very different. What is the monitoring response of treatment? But if you see a normal uh, sample uh, of this PFT, you will have uh, something called the bronchodilator, how it affects generally the treatment. Okay, so you in, in the PFT itself, you'll be seeing that uh, they'll be talking about bronchodilator, how it works before and after the treatment. So definitely after giving the bronchodilator, how the things goes, that also we have to see. Okay, so this is something we have to talk about today in the introduction. So three major categories, as you know, we are going to see, uh, we, we know about it, uh, our lung, it suffers like obstructive lung disease, like chronic bronchitis, asthma, and then of course, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, no matter what, obstruction could be due to two reasons. Of course, it is a narrowing. The narrowing could be spasm of the airway, or this very much narrowing could also happen due to lot of secretion which is not allowing 
the air to go easy in and out. So both the ways it can. Okay, well, now we'll be talking about restrictive lung diseases. Here also PFT is very, very, very important. Okay, so as you know, uh, say for example, if this is a medulla oblongata and then this is how it comes the spinal cord down like this. And then um, this is the dorsal horn nucleus from there the control comes. So this is the central C3, C1 to C4. Then you have a phrenic nerve coming, which is going for the diaphragm. Every one of us knows about it. I just want to give you the brief introduction so that you'll have one quick revision how we, how we talk about this. And then we have a lung here. Okay, sorry. Just a sec. We'll be making it. So take it as a schematic diagram. Don't chase me with this diagram. So say, for example, the lung is there. Okay, so what happened here? The diaphragm is like this, the phrenic nerve. And then of course, T1 to T12. What we have for the intercostal nerves, right? Intercostal nerves, which is working for the intercostal muscles. So all these things. Now, right from here, dorsal nuclei right from here to this level the cervical level to this thoracic level and the nerves like the phrenic phrenic nerve and then these spinal nerves which actually cause which is actually responsible for our intercostal muscles so any reason say for example nerve cut is there any sort of problem either it's a rta if it is a okay let us talk about this is there any problem is there any spinal cord injury sci spinal cord injury at higher level respiration gone right so in that case the phrenic nerve palsy might happen in that case what happened the chest wall compliance will decrease right in that chest wall compliance will decrease that means the volume of what a lung can hold is decreased that means what overall lung capacity will go down the total lung capacity will go down so that's the reason i'm telling you these kind of problem can happen now t1 to t3 if somebody has say for example rta Road, tra road traffic accident. So what was the intercostal muscle was working here due to the now, due to the, uh, because of the lack of ribs working properly, what will happen? The lung expansion, the compliance of that particular part will be reduced, right? So in that case, that can result into restrictive lung disease, right? So this is how restrictive lung disease also takes place. And apart from that, of course, uh, you have a, uh, chest wall pathology like uh, kyphosis or scoliosis or kyphoscoliosis. See, kyphosis you can remember, uh, every one of you know, but let me tell you, kyphosis you can remember like a letter K, English letter K, where, where you see the upper cervical, I'm sorry, upper thoracic vertebra is just like a letter K. Well, so what is going? It's going to decrease the expansibility, stretchability of the lung. That's how the lung volume is reduced, right? Now, now a kyphotic person may look normal to you in terms of, I mean to say, he may not have a problem in, uh, in, general, in general breathing, but that does not mean that he is all the time diseased. Or I can say this could be again, depending upon the postural one, whether it's reversible or not, that's another matter. What I'm saying you, most of the time, they may not have a symptoms, okay? So it's a chest wall pathology. It's getting tight, right? And then scoliosis. You can remember the letter like S, English letter S. See, if you see from the uh, behind, the air vertebra is like a letter S, isn't it? So what is happening? The overall lung is not properly working. The reason behind, it is not able to have a proper, what you say, that bucket handle movement or the pump handle movement, so lung stretchability, that's how the lung compliance is reduced, right? So you know very well, lung compliance depending upon the volume. So change in the volume divided by the change in the pressure. So this is how volume reduced, compliance reduced, simple. Okay, so apart from that, other pulmonary vascular disease like pulmonary, primary pulmonary hypertension or, or I can say you the, the uh, chronic thromboembolic disease, even in these cases, this is extremely important to understand. Okay, so now, yeah, 
these uh, functions of pulmonary test tube, whenever we are going to test pulmonary uh, function test, we are going to see, we are actually talking about large and smaller airways, any problem can happen, or the overall parenchyma, or the pulmonary vasculature, or the pump mechanism. I told you, you know, just now the chest wall deformities or diaphragm deformities, whether there is a problem of the, uh, like a pump handle movement, or it is a bucket handle movement, both are responsible for different dimension of stretchability. So overall lung compliance is reduced or not. That's how we are going to see that. Now, types of PFT, as I told you earlier, we have to understand the types of PFT. A standard PFT, a standard PFT is all about your uh, uh, like a spirometry, including the flow volume loop. Do you know about flow, vol flow volume loop? Uh, how many of you know about flow volume loop properly? I mean, you can see the loop and then can tell that what kind of disease it is. You can answer in your chat box, the flow volume loop. This is my question to you. In fact, the first question to you. Then we have to talk about lung volumes. Then we have to talk about the DLCO. Okay, let me check the... Okay, okay. One of my brightest students has answered. <laughs> yeah, thank you, maybe. Now, uh, arterial blood gas. Just a sec, one more person. Okay, I'll explain that. No worries. I'll re uh, you those don't know can revise. Those know can again revise. No problem. Is a uh, Irfan says the flow volume loop is a plot of inspiratory and expiratory flow on the y-axis against the volume uh, axis during the performance and maximally in forcefully inspiratory. Yes, you are right, hundred percent. Specialized PFTs. Okay, a specialized PFT is about your arterial blood gas. Mind you, we'll have a separate class on ABC analysis very soon, maybe next month, ABC analysis. How do we do arterial blood gas analysis, okay? And then we have ox exercise oximetry, then we have a six minute walk test, peak flow, maximum inspiratory and expiratory pressure. So these all are the specialized PFTs, okay? So PFT, of course, I don't know whether uh, you have seen that sample, but, uh, but this is how we have, and the normal lung volume and capacities, you could see how it actually work the normally the lung actually goes like this right like this so this is what we say the tidal volume and you can increase as much as you could inspire more than the tidal volume that we say that uh, inspiratory reserve volume irv okay first was tidal volume then was the inspiratory reserve volume and how much you could excel after the normal exhalation, that is what is your ERV, expiratory reserve volume, then you have certain called the capacity. Capacity is nothing, it's a capacity is a, a addition of volumes like tidal volume plus IRV is inspiratory capacity. If it is a EC, that means the in, uh, expiratory capacity is tidal volume plus ERV. But the best part is I have to understand the RV RV plus ERV, that is called the functional residual capacity because our all theory goes on this because we can't measure this easily, right? So I'll be letting you know today certain methods also, how do we measure it? Because it's really important if somebody asks, if you're a, if you are a student and then they, if you are asked into the, um, uh, what we say in the examination by uh, like a viva kind of thing. So that time you could answer. So, you know, residual volume, is something this air cannot come out right it remains in the lung, right it cannot come out whatever you do so this is very very important when we talk about flow volume loop right so this particular part is very important of course everything plays very important role but this is really very important and then of course we have a vital capacity vital capacity is nothing it is like a completely breathing in and then completely breathing out so it is an addition of what? TV, IRV, and KRV. So this is how the vital capacity is. TV, IRV, and ERV. All three at one place is vital capacity. Well, now uh, you'll be listening, uh, you'll be learning about Okay, somebody is asking about RV and dead space. Well, uh, if you know about dead space, dead space is something that uh, it is of two types, like you have anatomic and physiologic dead space where there is no exchange happens, right? 
there's no exchange happens so that is space don't get confused with this there is no exchange happens okay suppose uh, you have a two zones of the respiratory area conducting and respiratory conducting zone anatomically even though air is there air can't jump right from here to exactly to our respiratory zone right it has to cross that conducting zone also there there is no respiration happening there is no process of respiration happening that's how it is an anatomic dead space right and then of course anatomic and physiologic dead space is equal in a normal person but suppose a person having disease that we may discuss in different topic of course this is not the topic today so in that case what happened physiologically if if uh, inspiration and expression is not happening later on the space the dead space start increasing well so anatomic as well as physiologic dead space start increasing because those area of the lung is not more no more involved in respiration well now uh, total lung capacity of course total lung capacity is e equivalent to vc plus remaining amount of rv that means rv plus vc is the total lung capacity try to understand total lung capacity we have to understand when we talk about uh, PFT or any kind of test because total lung capacity may remain same, may remain normal, may look normal. But how do we have to check the total lung capacity? That is uh, maybe another 20, 30 minutes we'll be talking right from now. Okay. So that is the one very, very important concept. We need to understand about the residual volume, the volume of air which doesn't come out of the lung. And then of course, we have to uh, understand this uh, along with the ERV you know, like uh, this is how we have to understand the FRC, functional restoral capacity. Now, let us talk about something, uh, the kind of sample. I'll tell you that this is the kind of normal sample. Okay. So you have basically, uh, I think, four kind of uh, part in, the, in any kind of uh, PFT report. The one is the spirometer. Kindly understand this part really well. Okay, this is this is where you'll be getting your force vital capacity. Okay, I didn't explain about force vital capacity. Look, whatever is the vital capacity, how frequent do you do that? Okay, if you do it very frequently, that is what is our FVC, force vital capacity. Okay, this you keep in the mind. How fast you could do it? So forcefully, right? That's the reason. Then you have FEV1. Of course, we'll discuss about it. Then you have FEV1 to FVC ratio. You have FEF, then you have a PEF, then you have a FET. These three are not very important. So this particular part and second part comes to your lung volumes where your TLC is there, VC is there, FRC is there, ERV is there, RV is there, and there is definitely RV by TLC is there. Okay, this also ratio is important sometime uh, for few physicians, they use this ratio. And then of course, third part is your DLCO. DLCO, there will be the volume will be adjusted. I'll let you know why DLCO volume is adjusted. And there is something called the uh, flow volume loop. So this loop, basically, uh, you have to understand this loop. It's very, very important. Once you see the loop, you'll be able to know. If you have a very advanced PFT report, you can have this kind of thing also. This kind of equation also you could see in the, uh, in the PFT report. <laughs> this says about different type of volumes that I'll discuss to you how actually it has to be done so these are normal samples so you have a three types you have a you have a spirometry you have a lung volumes you have a diffusing capacity and then you have a flow volume loop so these are the four major part you find it here now spirometry okay here your objective must be able to learn about fev1 and its significance of course fev1 to fvc ratio flow volume loop and and analytics of uses of these values what you find out in the report okay so uh this fev1 how it is calculated fev1 anybody in the chat tell me anyone no problem i'll wait for your answer in the chat box Nobody? Post expiration in one second, okay.
forcefully breathing out in a mouthpiece connected to a spirometer. Okay. See, this is what you told is okay. But let me tell you, suppose there is an expiration. Okay. What you do, you are able to do like this. Yeah, this is a normal graph I'm doing. Okay. Normal people. So in one second, if you take it, this is second means timing and this is volume okay so you have more and more volume going out in one second after next second it actually attends a plateau right it actually attends the plateau this is the normal one so what is this is the normal one right so if we talk about the flow let me talk a little bit mathematical so change in the volume okay and then change in the track. okay so i'm talking about flow okay so here what is happening you can see the change in the volume happening in the change in the time very simple to understand this is the normal graph I'm telling you. So at end of one second, whatever is you, you have expelled the volume that we say is the peak. Expiratory flow rate, PEFR. Well, now say for example, you get a patient who has now been able to do this like this, okay? So that means, the volume of air which went out in one second was quite less, right? So if I go a mathematical plotting, as uh, one person told also some time back, we tell about theta, okay? So it is something like a 10 theta is equal to uh, x-axis and y-axis, okay? So we'll divide delta y by delta x x okay change in the uh, y axis change in the x axis so more the theta more the angle better pfr okay so this is very very important concept try to understand that okay so and and and, and actually it actually works in a very uh, different way sometimes the plateau gets attained in a very long time so you can actually find out in one second how much it has gone out okay so the peak whatever you get the peak this is the pfr and and one more thing as i was telling you that time uh, like fev1 fev1 is expelled amount of exhaled amount of air in just first second rather than one second i always learn uh, it's, it's always good to hear in first second how much air has gone out first second that is very important in general they say fev1 is to fvc ratio is very very important and that should be about 0 0.8 that means it should be 80 percent right that should be 80 percent in general right so this is how the maneuver you have to think of now apart from that if we talk about a next concept called flow volume loop, okay? Now, uh, flow volume loop, if we talk about uh, uh, like, uh, you know, like knowing about the flow volume loop, so how many of you can identify flow volume loop by seeing the graph? How many of you? Suppose you see the flow volume loop and then can identify how it is. Okay, I will not share any diagram. What I'll do, I'll draw the diagram and then I'll see that uh, uh, you understand this properly. Okay. I will, I will draw first the normal one, how the normal goes. Okay. I'll be drawing about first volume and time. And then I'll be drawing about most importantly 
फ्लो वॉल्यूम लूप फॉर अ नॉर्मल पर्सन हाउ इट वर्क नॉर्मल फर्स्ट ओके सो वॉल्यूम वर्सेस टाइम एज आई टोल्ड यू if the graph goes like this for normal person i'm telling you okay it graph you know after some time it will start getting plateau well so this particular thing we say as fvc force vital capacity how much the air has gone out okay this is the volume versus time well now let us talk about flow volume loop for a normal person uh i will not make it more complex for you just try to understand it's very easy to understand uh, otherwise there is a lot of formula in this so flow yeah so say for example we'll start zero from here generally we start and then we see like how much the volume can be taken out uh, taken in sorry so what i do inspiration cool inspiration has happened now see the expiration okay and then nicely it comes down this particular peak what you are seeing this peak this is pefr because this was a part of expiration and this is the part of inspiration okay so what i mean to say you now you can see nicely the inspiration has happened over the second and then flow in the expiration is like this this is the highest flow and then nicely it has come down to normal okay so this is the normal pfr and then expiration has come down like this okay inspiration has happened like this and expiration has come down well now uh, let us talk about something which is abnormal you know abnormal is something very very important to understand yeah so abnormal now <clears throat> say for example if somebody has obstruction a uh, mild obstruction or uh, not mild obstruction that's a different thing so volume versus time how the volume versus time will be there for the obstruction people he will not be able to easily take out the air so his plateau will take time to attain right plateau will take more time and then other part what will happen the one second volume what you were talking fev1 will not be happening so soon right so his volume versus time graph will be less theta say for example less theta right so he has a less less inclination less peak now if you draw about the person uh, like uh, you know like a uh, having the volume versus time for a uh, for a obstructive obstruction obstructive disease how it will go of course this is the axis and then you have axis like this i told you most of the obstructive cases only obstructive cases has no problem in the inspiration in general right then expiration is a problem <clears throat> so what will happen from here i will choose little thicker one so to so to understand that okay it will take like this go and then from here what will happen see in general if it was a normal uh, graph if you remember this graph would have had a better pfr and it could have had a normal in uh, 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 what we say that sloping down and of course inspiration is a normal thing so what is the difference you are seeing here there is a coving if you see here there is a coving this particular graph has got cove here see there is a depression if there is a more if there is a mild one there will be a little depression if there is a and then one more thing inspiration part also will be little shorter little shorter little shorter inspiration also will be little shorter and what is that 
residual volume that will be more for these people anyway i'll discuss to you that concept little later but if it is a mild obstruction if it is a mild obstruction let me tell you this will be going here okay and if it is a severe obstruction the going will be more isn't it hmm. means very difficult with very difficult the this this thing will go out so what will happen this graph particularly also will be down so this going will be much more going will be more if there is a more obstruction okay so once you see this pft report you can find out easily but if there is a more obstruction it is a mild obstruction okay let me let me uh, catch up your uh, site with more obstruction how does it work if there is a more obstruction how will it work it will go like this and it uh, it will take long time to attend the plateau long time to attend the plateau if you see his volume versus time graph which is actually not on the not on the uh, pft chart but volume versus time graph it takes long time to attend the plateau okay so this is how the you have to make the difference of this uh, uh, of volume versus uh, sorry the pft chart uh, sorry uh, flow volume loop on the pft chart but a uh, story is not finished yet it was a story of obstruction but do you know one thing if it is a story of uh, say for example restriction let me uh, yeah if it is a story of restriction there is already a page i have kept if it is a story of a restrictive lung disease as i told you that restrictive lung disease can happen due to lot of problem it could be even i ild it could be a chest wall disorder it could be neuromuscular disorder right mnd motor neuron disease or uh, sma spinal muscular atrophy or any sort of these patients who are not able to have a proper volume inside them so they have a restrictive lung disease you know what happen in restrictive lung disease the flow volume loop works in a very uh, different way it's very different way first of all see in the flow uh, volume versus time how it works for this or uh, restrictive people restrictive lung disorder people see it actually goes like this it attains the plateau as normal but overall what should be the total lung capacity it always goes down so total lung capacity comes down for the restrictive people try to understand for the restrictive dis disorder total lung capacity comes down okay we have described here here now let us talk about the flow volume loop for the restrictive people how it actually works for the restrictive people uh let me tell you one thing inspiration expiration normal so it looks very much normal so what is the difference here from the what is the difference here uh, for the with the normal one it is it is less inspiration because total lung capacity is you know little bit less than the normal people and what is the difference the next difference is pfr is low or it could be very very normal i mean it could be near normal so many many a times it looks very much normal then how we have to find out that it is a restrictive disease it depends upon other kind of situation okay it depends upon entirely other kind of situation other kind of it may depend on the chest x ray it may depend upon other things right so this is how it works so pfr could no normal or reduced now you don't find any coving that is the characteristic feature of the flow volume loop in the restrictive lung disorder volume and then flow how the flow volume loop matters for them see inspiration expiration normally it is reduced than the inspiration expression also it is reduced or pfr is little reduced than the normal 
or it is almost normal, but there is no coving found here in the restrictive lung disorder. So this is how the flow volume loop actually works. So flow volume loop, if you understand, I'm telling you half of the your tension in learning that is reduced. But I'm not finished yet. At this point of time, we have to think, you know, most of the, our uh, people, they think like if we know about FE1, FVC ratio, our thing is done. No. So values measured by PFT was what? FEV1, FVC, the most important FVV1 to FVC ratio, and then flow volume curve. So once you are done with this, your half part is done with PFT. But next half part, let me tell you, is more tough, like PFR. If you see PFR, it could be as normal as normal person, the PFR, then it could be a restrictive disorder also. Then how you have to find out, we'll be coming to that. FEF is there, MBV, maximum ventilation, voluntary ventilation, and then you have a response to bronchodilators. You know, before bronchodilator, you gave how much the response was, and after that, how the response began. So normal, if you see interpretation, FEV1 is to FVC ratio, what is called the Tiffany index also, I believe. This Tiffany index, Tiffany index, okay, FEV1 to FVC ratio. So that is decreased 100% in the obstructive lung disorder. Okay, whether it's a mild or higher obstruction, it will be reduced. No doubt about it, this will be definitely reduced because FEV1 and FVC, FEV1, if it is reducing, overall area will be less. But GAM begins with the restrictive lung disorder where FEV1 remains normal or decreased, but FVC definitely decreased. I mean, to say like they are not able to do completely out. So in that case, what happened? Either nominator also uh, decreasing, denominator also decreasing. So if both decreases, no, it remains almost like a normal. Or many a times it goes more than 70%. If it is going more than 80%, 100%, you can say it's a restrictive disorder because in that case, FEV1 has reduced much more. If you see, and then FVC doesn't decrease like that, that way. So when we will be talking about ABG charting, that time I'll tell you how it is related to our oxygenation curve also. But right now you should understand obstructive lung disorder, it should be definitely decreases less than 70%, no doubt about it. But in restrictive lung disorder, GAM is not finished. Why? Because it could be less, it could be uh, normal or it could be increased. So even though somebody has a restrictive lung disorder, the FEV1 to FVC ratio may remain normal may remain normal, okay? Because restrictive lung disorder, as it looks very simple, no, it is having a large kind of dimension, right from medulla, I mean, right from the spinal cord injury to the intercostal muscle paralysis, it can happen due to any reason, let me tell you any reason, even the ILD, see, interstitial lung disease, okay? So this is how we have to interpret. Now, the next is the most important part is our algorithm, okay? I want, I will, uh, I will tell you that we will be coming back to this page all the time. We'll be coming to this page all the time. Reason behind page number 18, keep in the mind, we have to come all the time. Reason why? Because this is the page where our algorithm starts. Okay, algorithm, I mean to say that this is the page, this is the page where actually our, uh, we have to understand how really the theory work if you see and you know once you understand this particular algorithm you are good enough so what do you see when you uh, sorry when do you see the f uh, pft report what do you do that fev1 fvc ratio you find out okay what it could be the ratio either it could be low or it could be high right let us take example if it is low, if it is low, then what we have to do? We have to assess FVC. Assess FVC, very, very important algorithm to understand this. Very, very important to understand, okay? If it is a normal, say for example, FEV1 ratio was normal, but still person is having a difficulty. Okay, in breathing and all those things happening, you will say what? He's a disease free? No, not at all. In that case, also you have to assess FVC. 
So I told you this page is very, very important. Even at last, we have to come here and revise everything because every time we'll be learning new concept, we have to apply this formula. Okay, so here, if you, if you assess FVC, then after that, it's very important to understand what to do next. If it is a low, definitely it could be obstruction. If it is high or normal, it could be restriction or the person can be normal. Then how will you actually uh, come to this picture? Like what is the real one? Okay, we'll leave this space in between right now and we will be going ahead and we'll be learning how total lung capacity actually works. Okay, this is the gold stage. Every one of you know about gold stage of COPD. So I will not discuss this. Okay, well, uh, so I told you that page number 18 will go back again and we'll see like if FVC is normal or like FE1, FE, FVC ratio is normal, then how do we have to identify like what is actual the problem? Okay, so now let's talk about lung volumes. Anyway, we have spoken about lung volumes and capacities, but now again, how the FRC and TLC are measured. Okay, how important TLC is to understand the diagnosis and then of course, especially the restrictive lung disorder because restrictive lung disorder always creates a problem. It's, it, it appears as is report appears as good as normal. So how you have to identify that's what the page number 18 we have to go back and see. And one more thing that uh, how we measure that FRC and TLC is a big concept. I don't want to get into detail of that because that is not primary topic of the subject today. So there are four primary methods of measurement. There is a helium dilution. There is a there is a nitrogen washout. If I take a uh, like a detailed class in that we talk about helium dilution, nitrogen wash out, and then body plethysmography, radiographic measurement. So these two are a bit more specific helium dilution because uh, this kind of metals uh, like, you know, from before the inspiration and after expiration in the air, we check about the how much helium has to be there. Okay, so concentration of helium. And uh, if you multiply with the normal volume, what you have given inside during the inspiration and during expression, you have to check out what is that. If that is reduced, that means because helium cannot be dissolved in the body, right? So what happened? It will be along with the remaining air in the lung. That is what the FRC we calculate. Same like nitrogen wash out. So it is not the primary uh, things to be tell uh, here. So now interpretation. Now, uh, this interpretation is something very, very important for you to understand. Again, we'll be going back to the page number 18, but before that you try to understand. So low P FEV1 to FVC ratio is obstruction. Low TLC is 100% restriction. As I told you, their total lung capacity comes down very badly. And then if both is present, even FEV1, FVC ratio is low, as well as the TLC, total lung capacity is low. That means it could be both obstruction, restriction, mixed effect. But as a physio or as a medical profession, our work doesn't end here. We have to talk about how it is like that. So let us talk about certain graphics, okay? Graphics is, I mean to say TLC graphics I have written, that does not mean anything very uh, rocket science. It is very, very simple thing, okay? What is total lung capacity? You know very well. Now, let me draw about a normal person, okay? Suppose this is there, okay? This is where you have a residual volume, you have a expiratory reserve volume, you have a tidal volume, and then of course you have a inspiratory reserve volume, right? So IRV, TV, ERV, and then RV, right? This is how is total, and this is total called the total lung capacity, right? And this is what you say as the vital capacity. So I was talking about that at time very separately. Every one of you know about it, but still let me tell you how this matters a lot, TLC. Okay, but what happened in the normal, it is the normal lung I'm telling you, normal, normal, I'll write it normal, normal we find like this. But if it is an obstruction case, what happened in obstruction? Every one of you know obstruction, there is a more compliance in the lung. That means the lung is more volume, you know, amount of air remaining in the lung becomes more. So residual volume will be more. Try to understand. Expiratory reserve volume may remain unchanged or it will be more only. And then tidal volume 
may little reduce and then inspiratory reserve volume may remain normal so in this case what happen you see vital capacity may decrease but overall total lung capacity will definitely increase this is the theory so it happens in obstruction very important to understand this obstruction okay i'll see the chat my network is quite clear so kindly check your device if you are not able to hear okay now let us talk about restriction in restriction what happened restriction inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume tidal volume everything is reduced everything is reduced residual volume everything is reduced irv erv uh, sorry tv erv and then of course rv so everything is reduced okay so overall vital capacity is reduced and overall total lung capacity also is reduced okay so this is the story of restriction okay there is a uh, the restriction but there could be the story which which actually present the mixed one see which actually present the mixed graph where the residual volume can be more and then of course erv could be better and then tidal volume could be normal and irv could be normal so in that case what happened vital capacity is too less okay and then total lung capacity is too high very simple to understand this concept okay obstruction normally tlc is more restriction tlc is less but this could be the mixed condition okay so in that case we'll have a Uh, will have a total lung capacity very very important to understand okay so i say always once you have this problem what to do fev1 to fbc ratio then we have to go back to page number 18 again and we have to see our um, algorithm what actually we were left off okay so fev1 to fbc ratio if it is low then what did we do we assess fbc forced vital capacity <coughs> if forced vital capacity if forced vital capacity remain low then what happen if it remains low ss tlc okay total lung capacity if it is low then it is a mixed one very important to understand if it is high obstruction very simple obstruction okay so even though fbc was normal or high it was a obstruction right because <sighs> more force was needed to take out the air right now if we see this side fbc if it is a uh, <clears throat> uh what we say uh it was a normal or a high then normally we do one more thing we try to take that tlc into the picture so we assess what tlc total lung capacity okay if it is a <clears throat> uh no, say for example it was normal or high so what actually was the problem the problem was it could be looking like a normal lung normal lung but it may not be normal that we will come to the third chapter when we will talking about okay so if you take ss if you assess the total lung capacity and if it is a little high let me tell you if it is a high then lot of things could happen that you have to see according to other blood report now if it is total lung capacity is low then what is that that is a pure restriction so i told you this page number 18 is very very important to understand at last also will come on this okay after this see even the ss assessing the total lung capacity when it was low it could have been mixed or if it is a low definitely it is a case of the restriction 100% restriction if it is total lung capacity is less then how we will find out how will we find out and one more thing 
this is all what we are talking about obstruction, restriction, or mixed type of defect. Where is the pulmonary vascular disorder? We are not able to see the pulmonary vascular disorder in all this algorithm. We are not able to see pulmonary uh, vascular disorder. To know about those pulmonary vascular disorder, now we have to go and talk something about the DLCO. DLCO is an extremely important concept. What is DLCO? Anybody has any idea? Or anybody has seen this report, DLCO? You can, you can message in the chat, no problem. DLCO is basically, we have to see the diffusing capacity of carbon monoxide into the blood, okay? So why? Because there is a physiologic significance of the carbon monoxide, okay? Why? Because we have to understand the DLCO value can, it can helpful, it can be helpful in prioritizing or categorizing your normal uh, report for the normal lung disease for your patients. But if there is a, everything normal, still DLCO can be alterated due to other disease. Very simple. Carbon monoxide is having a very high affinity for the hemoglobin, very high, much more than the oxygen. And it's a highly poisonous gas. So every time we breathe in, normal method I'm telling you, it actually it is a measure of overall function of alveolar capillary membrane. I'll tell you, I'll explain you very properly, how does it matter? So what happened? Suppose we are breathing in, the method I'm telling you, simple method. So, you know, breathing in, 10 second hold, after ex exhalation, first liter is waste, we have to remove. After the second liter, we have to check what is the concentration of carbon monoxide into that, okay? So that way we have to find out how much carbon monoxide has gone inside the blood. So once we are trying to find out that, I'm telling you, we are well set to say that really there is some other problem also, what we are not able to get it from the FEB1, FBC and other graph. okay? Now, apply the fixed law of diffusion. See, this is the fixed law of diffusion. What is fixed law of diffusion? It's a, a little mathematical Vx. Vx is nothing, it's the rate of diffusion. It's equal to diffusion coefficient. This is always a coefficient factor in the mathematics into A, surface area of the, the particular alveoli and then or, or the alveolar surface and then DP. That is the pressure gradient. What is the pressure outside? What is the pressure inside? And then divided by dx. dx is nothing, it's the thickness of the membrane. Now tell me one very simple thing. If there, if there is a uh, like a ILD, say for example, there is a ILD or uh, or my uh, like uh, any of the participants can think about emphysema. What happened in emphysema? You have a more bullet getting rupture and you have a more area over there, right? More area, right? This is how it works. So suppose somebody has ILD, one patient has ILD, interstitial lung disorder. In that case, what happened? Alveoli has a thicker membrane, right? In that case, the diffusion will be very less. So DX, that means the thickness of the membrane. If this increases, that means the VX, the rate of diffusion will decreases. Very simple, very simple. So that means even though every capacity and volume of the air is normal, even that we can find out through the DLCO whether the thickness of the membrane of the alveoli is more or less. If it is very much, if it is more, because this is a division, right? So if it is a more, thickness of membrane is more, rate of diffusion will be less. Okay, and you can you can actually think about surface area also. What happened in alveol, uh, say for example, emphysema. See, emphysema, what happened? Nice alveolis everywhere, right? Nice alveolis. So what happened after some time, alveola, there's a proteolytic enzyme and then that get, get damaged to the alveoli and then what happened? It creates a large space like this, you know, emphysema bullet. Well, so what happened? Overall surface area of the alveoli definitely get decreased right? It get decreased what it was a normal, you know, this area was quite normal and it was much more, right? Now it has decreased, overall surface area has decreased. So what will happen here, you see? It is a nominator. So area get decreased, volume of uh, rate of diffusion will get also decreased, okay? That's the reason I'm saying you, you apply the concept, it will work. So fixed law of diffusion, we have to apply and we have to find out how DLCO actually affect our system. There's a long story of DLCO. It can increase, as I told you that time, it can increase, uh, let's talk about when it can decrease. 
a fixed law of diffusion. Just now you saw emphysema because of reduced surface area, it is decreased. ILD because of increased membrane thickness, very good. And then pulmonary hypertension and anemia also it can decrease, but it can increase during exercise. So I'm telling everybody to do regular exercise, right? Not I am, I mean, whole world is saying. So supine position, asthma, pulmonary hemorrhage, polycythemia, left ventricular hypertrophy. I can say more than ventricular hypertrophy, it is a left cardiac failure. Mild, mild version also. It can increase DLCO, okay? So now you understood DLCO has such a beautiful importance in knowing about vascular diseases, okay? Apart from the air diseases, right? Now, technicians generally what do happen you know what technicians adjust the dlco value based on the underlying health conditions it's very important and it is little illogical i feel it so we have ha we should have a better technician who actually adjust the dlco value based upon the underlying conditions suppose anemia is there in that case suppose dlco value is 100 they'll be keeping like somewhere 80 80 percent 80 percent if this is able to attain to the predicted value that means dlco it is able to clear so diffusing capacity of uh, carbon monoxide is much more important now let us go back to the page number 18 page number 18 will be very important i told you even earlier page number 18 yeah page number 18 now where we were confused about this like from there you uh, like this obstruction we were confused now, again, we will be talking about this obstruction. We will be telling that let us talk about DLCO. If we are able to measure the DLCO in this case, okay, if DLCO is low, low emphysema, just now we have seen emphysema condition can happen. Suppose still DLCO also you find normal. Let me tell you that will be a chronic bronchitis. Why chronic bronchitis? Because emphysema was a reduction in the overall surface area but chronic bronchitis mind you there is no reduction there is no reduction 100 percent what is happening the problem in the chronic bronchitis obstruction is due to the secretion of the obstruction is due to the more secretion right so chronic bronchitis and asthma can have a normal also many a times okay now uh, let us talk about uh, restriction what was here right this restriction was very much uh, like a tougher thing for us so so this restriction let me erase it and then uh, make it more clear to you this i have written as a restriction okay assessing tlc we found total lung capacity was low but still that there is no symptom going on and the person is suffering so we are doing what we are checking the dlco also so if we are talking about the DLCO, if we find low DLCO, that means it could be ILD, okay? If it is a high DLCO, that means it could be the chest wall deformities like kyphoscoliosis, scoliosis, obesity, kyphosis, anything related to the chest wall because DLCO has nothing to do with the chest wall deformities. It has to do everything with the per membrane permeabilities. If membrane is permeable, well ahead. That's the reason The in restriction, we have to find out. If it is a restrictive disorder, let us talk about the DLCO. If DLCO report is normal, the restriction is because of the intercostal muscles, or it could be because of the, some phrenic nerve palsy or anything else, nothing related to diffusion. If everything is normal, the person remains normal, look normal, everything is okay. Still he is huh, having that sort of problem. The total lung capacity is low. In that case, we have to find uh, the DLCO, if DLCO is kind of low, that means he has an interstitial disease. What is interstitial disease? ILD? Anybody? Okay, no problem. I know you know, but okay. If normal lung mechanics also you find DLCO low, normal lung mechanics, but DLCO is low, then what could be it? This is pulmonary vascular disease, not peripheral vascular disease. Huh? I'm talking about PVD. That doesn't mean the peripheral vascular disease. This is the normal pulmonary vascular disorder and if it is a say for example normal normal lung mechanics dlco also normal yes banda is totally fit there is no problem so it is called the normal pft test okay very simple apply the trick get the things done very very simple 
okay so uh we'll come back to that again in the revision chapter but right now we have to think like this okay so dlc your part we completed now it's very important to understand the fixed formula once you know the fixed formula everything is easy now let us revise entire things we learned and understand how to analyze pft report quickly how what is the trick okay so basically as i told you trick is nothing very rocket science see the first part fpv1 to fpc ratio okay first see this after you try to see that fbc increased or decreased then you check tlc very simple then you check dlco this will tell you the result very simple very 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 simple this will tell you the result you don't have to do anything else okay so if you want to read the pft you how much i gave the lecture for one hour is something to understand is nothing to do with the reading report okay while reading report if you have understanding the concept well go to the fpv1 to fbc ratio after that go to the fbc then go to the tlc and then go to the dlco you will be able to go to the conclusion how the page number 18 was say okay page number 18 was all about algorithm we will again revise that that's not a problem just i'm telling you okay so before we get into our practice time uh, i will uh, tell you to go to the page number 18 again find out the algorithm how algorithm works so that once again it will be easy for us okay so fpv1 fbc ratio without i mean we saw okay if this ratio becomes no uh, th this ratio becomes low say for example this ratio becomes low we have to check fbc if FVC means the force vital capacity is low, then we have to check again TLC, total lung capacity. If that is low, it could be either obstruction or restriction or both. Okay. If FVC is normal or high, that case it will be totally obstruction 100% because person is struggling to take out the air, right? In that case, we have to check DLCO. DLCO is low. That means emphysema. I told you how emphysema will be there because of the low surface areas, right? And if it is a normal or high, it could be asthma or it could be a chronic bronchitis. In these case, what happens? Secretion is a problem, not the alveolar wall. Okay, surface area decrement is not a big thing. Okay, now if the FBC is normal or whatever, we have to check TLC, total lung capacity. If total lung capacity is low, okay i'll go slow well okay 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 so we are checking tlc total lung capacity if it is low definitely it will be in uh, restriction everybody knows that because air is not filling into the lung to the fullest clear now if it is a high if total lung capacity is high we have to again see what we have to do it Okay, it could be various things. It could be many more things. Again, we have to depend upon other report. If it is low, we have to see the restriction. We will be checking out the DLCO factor. If the DLCO factor is high, that means it is a chest wall deformities because if carbon monoxide diffusing capacity is much more higher, that means the lung is normal. What is creating the problem in restriction? I told you, you know, restriction can have a problem right from the uh, like uh, spinal cord to the intercostal muscles, right? So what happened? Anything which is creating problem apart from the lung parenchyma tissue, that could be the chest wall, right? So chest wall deformities. If DLCO is low, that means the carbon monoxide is not able to permeate through the membrane. Membrane what? Alveoli, right? If it is not able to pass down, that means what? It is low, right? DLC is low. That means it is an interstitial lung disorder or it could be the pulmonary fibrosis, any sort of thing which is not allowing carbon monoxide to get diffused easily. Is it clear? Okay. Now, if FEV1, FVC is normal also, I have told you, even though it's a normal or higher, it could be a problem again. In that case, you have to see FVC if you find FVC also normal, then it will be a normal lung. 
but normal lung also normal lung also in that case if you find dlco normal then pfd report is 100% normal if dlco is low that means there is nothing related to the air there is related to the blood that is the pulmonary vascular disorder that's the, that's, that is how we try to find out the pulmonary vascular disorder through the pfd chart now the algorithm is clear algorithm is nothing it is how to apply idea analytically so that you can come to the certain conclusion dear members whoever has attended my differential diagnosis class it was full of algorithm isn't it algorithm of about the chest pain algorithm about the dyspnea so same thing algorithm about the uh, pulmonary uh, like what to say pulmonary function test i presented you today it's just one page one diagram it says all the story one flow chart tells all the story you see all the story okay so should i repeat this again those who wants me to repeat i'll repeat it i said f e v1 to f v c ratio is the most important while reading the report simple if this ratio is low okay we will be checking f v c forced vital capacity 100% if it is normal or high it is it is actually saying us it could be obstruction okay <clears throat> okay again of course we'll be uh, dealing about the tlc total lung capacity also no matter what we have to check this is the second part okay after uh, sorry sec second part was fbc third part was this tlc if tlc we find low that means obstruction and restriction both can be there because you are seeing the feature of fvc forced vital capacity that is also high and then tlc is very low that means it could be obstruction it could be restriction both this is the reason i told here it is a mixed defect here okay but coming to this flow when it was the normal or higher and it created a kind of obstruction okay so in that case you will be checking the dlco dlco is low that means it is a kind of emphysema chronic smoker reason behind this i told you know this um, nice alveoles are damaged and it has created a single bullet so what happened overall surface area each alveoli whatever the surface area was now it has dissolved and converted into a big hole okay so overall surface area what it was say for example this was an alveoli nice alveoli structures okay everywhere it has a proper surface area right but when it convert into the bullet it will have a single surface area so it will be too less okay that's the reason i told you this this particular diagram okay once again i'm telling you those who could not understand this is the alveoli terminal bronchiole nice alveoli you had earlier before emphysema okay okay what i'm saying you individually if you calculate you will have a more surface area but what happened after this all this getting damaged and creating a big surface area so once it is a creating a big surface area there is a big space here but that does not mean the surface area of the membrane will be higher that will be definitely low very clear okay so if the dlco is low dlco is low why because there is a less surface area less carbon monoxide is able to permeate to the blood that means it is a emphysema kind of situation okay but if it is a normal or high it could be asthma because you know very well uh, this alveoli is has no issues in structural basis in the chronic bronchitis or asthma in general okay what is the main issue here secretion secretion is creating problem to to have the problem of the air and the pressure getting decreased and the epp is attaching normally you know what is the epp you understand right you don't know okay equal point of pressure is achieved early okay so in that case that is the reason it is the uh, chronic bronchitis okay if it is a normal if it is a chronic bronchitis or asthma anything but if it is a low it is emphysema come to another flow we have to assess the tlc when we are assessing the tlc total lung capacity if it is a higher there could be a lot of problem if there is a total lung capacity is higher it could be not just obstructive disease could be a lot of other problem okay now if it is a low 100% it is a restriction you also buy this my argument now what happened i told you you have to check here dlco if dlco is normal that means 
DLCO says you all about through the permeability of the membrane, whether carbon dioxide is able to go through the membrane or not. It has nothing to do with our chest wall or body shape or any problem others. No, it doesn't have to do anything else. So what is happening here? Chest wall deformities will say if we find DLCO is a normal or high. But if it is a low DLC, that means alveoli is having a trouble. Alveoli surface area is getting decreased or fibrosed or whatever be that problem, okay? So ILD, not able to pass. Thick membrane, okay? Interstitial lung disorder, thick membrane. So you have to, it's not able to pass carbon dioxide. So we are saying ILD. Now come to normal FEV1 to FVC ratio. Of course, we have to check the FVC if it is a normal lung, okay? FVC is a normal lung uh, mechanics. Okay, if FVC is also normal, this is a normal lung mechanics. Now, <clears throat> if it is a high also, normal or high anything, if it is a no, uh, normal lung mechanics, but here what happened, if the DLCO, if you check and then our DLCO uh, becomes less, that means in this case, in normal lung, looking like a normal lung, if the DLCO is low, that is a pulmonary vascular disorder. If DLCO is normal or high, that is, sorry, DLCO is a normal, that means it is a pure normal PFT is there. Pure normal PFT, no problem. The person can go happily back to the home. Now the algorithm is clear. Very simple algorithm. Okay. Very simple, understandable. Now let us talk about certain um, case histories, right? So once we know about the case history, things become more clear. Okay, so I'm going straight away to the case history. You know, case history makes our things very easy and normal. Yeah, so we'll be taking about one. Oh, come on, we'll take only one case or, or, or we'll take two cases, easy. Okay, so what is happening here, you see? If you see this report, uh, history is a 56-year smoker, okay? 56 year smoker presents with a progressive productive cough and dyspnea over three months. If you have taken examination, thin, appears comfortable. Temperature is 37.6, heart rate 95, BP is almost normal, respiratory rate 24, oxygen saturation is 95% on room air, chest having a diminished lung sound throughout both the lungs. Okay, cardiac is a regular rhythm, no murmur, normal jugular venous pulse pressure. And this is his the PFT report. This person, we have to check about the FEV1 to FVC ratio. See what happened here. Here, if you see, this is the pre, this is the post, okay, and this is the reference level where it is a predictive range they are showing. Okay, so if you see his range, it is looking more like 82 you see okay and after that we have to see what we have to see what we have to see fev uh, sorry uh, we have to see about the lung uh, volumes okay wait don't jump to the conclusion so fast it may not be the what you are thinking so don't jump the, to the conclusion so fast <clears throat> <clears throat> so what i was saying you it could be then next we have to check about the next we have to check about the what i showed you fvc of course we will be checking about fvc that is about 61 percent reference okay then So then we'll be checking about the total lung capacity. Total lung capacity, if you see, it is little higher. No, yeah, total lung capacity is higher. Then you check about the flow volume loop. If you see the flow volume loop, it has a, just a sec, just a sec, just a sec. It has a coving, right? It has a coving. So that means 100% it is a obstructive disorder right some obstructive disorder he hatch okay because it is a coping 
Now, <clears throat> apart from that, you see anything else you can see here? Now, apart from coving, any, anything else you can see here? You have to see FPV. To FVC ratio, as I told you. Let me tell, let me see if anybody can answer me. Anything else you can see? So I told you after FEV1, FVC, what we have to see. And this is something we have seen, right? Now FVC you see here. What is that? Okay. So after that, we have to see FVC. In FVC, or we can see PLC according to our algorithm. It is an obstructive lung disorder. But what kind of obstructive lung disorder it is? Now let us talk about PLC, total lung capacity. And if it is a total lung capacity, we find it low. That means it could be either obstructive or restrictive, or it could be the mixed effect, right? Because you see your TLC is little low here. Okay, reference level is low. So that means what? It could be mixed disorder till now. Now, let us see the DLCO report, which is adjusted, okay, which is adjusted. Once you start practicing, it's very, very easy, okay. So now, if you see the DLCO report, which is adjusted, okay. So what is the DLCO here? Can, you, can anybody uh, tell me like how, how different it is the, this one, DLCO? See here. See here, DLCO adjusted and this is a both, okay? See, this is how they write that. Test are pre and post four puffs albuterol. That means it has been, salbutamol has been given, okay? Uh, sorry, <laughs> bronchodilator has been given. So this is how they write it in the report. So here you see, reference level is almost normal. Adjusted is also correct. That means it is, a, it is not a restrictive disorder, even though the TLC is little less. This is a pure chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Okay, because it is a value is adjusted. Okay, so this is how. So once you see the flow volume loop, you will be able to understand everything chronic bronchitis. Could be, it could be. It all depends upon, then we have to see, of course, we have to see the x-ray, right? We have to see x-ray. If there is a more nodular presence, we'll be saying differently. If there is a more secretion presence, we'll be saying differently. But at this point of time, seeing this PFT report, we find it, it is a more of obstructive disorder. Just your eyes should go like a mathematician just here. Okay, this saves you a lot of story. First, this FE1, FVC ratio, then you have to assess that uh, FVC. If it is FVC is less, we have to think about the uh, obstruction. Then you have to see about TLC. If TLC is low, then we have a problem that either restriction or obstruction. If TLC is also high, 100% obstruction. This case study, we were stuck because TLC was little low. Okay. Now, let us talk about second case history. Very important, very, very impressive case history. See, 32-year-old animal trainer present with progressive dyspnea. See the, how nicely they have a progressive dry cough and dyspnea over the past month. Animal trainer. Mind this word. Animal trainer. That means it could be some allergy case also. What do you think? Isn't it? It could be some allergy case also. It is possible. Allergy is possible because animal trainer, animal trainer is, may have more encounter. May, they may not experience the symptom, but it may have. Okay, if you see the general examination, general examination is all about appears mild respiratory discomfort, some temperature, uh, higher heart rate. Okay, tachycardia, that's good. If tachycardia is there, 100%, there is a chance of some infection. If cardiac system is regular rhythm, then there is no problem with the cardiac, but 100% there is a problem with the infection system. That you can understand, right? VP is almost normal and respiratory rate 88%. Now, 88% is giving some trouble, right? So this is how the normal history is. Now, let us talk about, let us go here. See, even though 
I teach people, I teach students a lot about this PFT or whatever, but my sight 100% goes on the graph first. I don't know why. Always I see the graph. And seeing here, I feel this is a, this is a kind of mixed or restrictive. See, inspiration is good enough, no doubt, but expiration value is less, right? PFR also is looking less, right? That means it is a restrictive plus obstructive could be more uh, mixed also or restrictive only. Okay. So, okay. According to rule, let us go. We are uh, FEV1 to FVC ratio. We have to see. So what is the FEV1 to FVC ratio? We have to see and then um, uh, we'll be going for the uh, here and then just a sec. FBC, F ah, see, see how big the ratio is, 94, 100% restrictive it looks like, isn't it? FEV1 to FBC, so high ratio, 100% it is not an obstructive disorder. If it is a normal and high, right? So what happened here? If it is a very high, 84, 94 predictive, that means what? It is a high ratio. It is restrictive disorder. Now, see the even FVC. FVC is also high. Right? FVC is also little higher. So, it is a, if it FVC is higher, I have told you what? It could be the normal lung mechanics or it could be the obstruction also. So, <clears throat> uh, what we have to do? According to rule, FEV1 to FVC, we have to see, okay? And we found it higher. After finding this higher, we went to check the FVC, post vital capacity. We found it, oh, achha, achha, sorry, 1.7. It was, FVC was lower. When FVC was lower, we checked it according to root what? TLC total lung capacity and we find total lung capacity what lower where is TLC see total lung capacity is lower if total lung capacity is lower that means it 100% it is a restriction case isn't it now now there is some uh, confusion here too okay what is the confusion uh, if you see it's a DLCO value, DLCO value is something which is saying that in restriction it has a different kind of uh, problem. Okay, you see his DLCO ratio, you will be surprised to see, see the adjusted value. It is less, DLCO is less, adjusted value is less. Okay, what is mean by DLCO is less? It could be some form of interstitial lung disorder. Right? Right. It could be less. Or it could be emphysema, I mean, obstructive disorder also. But why it is not obstructive disorder? Because TLC is low. So if TLC is low, it could be 100% restrictive disorder. Now restriction is confirmed. Let us talk about what kind of restriction it is. If restriction is confirmed, we have checked out the DLCO. We found it little low. In restriction, if you see DLCO is low, that means the membrane is creating problem in diffusing of the carbon monoxide. That is the blood is not able to go easily. That means the membrane is thicker. What kind of problem the membrane can get thicker? Any sort of interstitial lung disorder? And you see the history here, animal trainer. That means a lot of fur would have given some trouble. So definitely there is a ILD or I can tell uh, it is a, uh, uh, a kind of what we say, it is a kind of uh, interstitial lung disorder only, but what do you say that term, very, very common term, it looks like a pneumonia, but it happens due to allergy. What do you say that? I follow. Uh, hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis. You know, allergy is more and the pneumonitis is happening. It is presenting symptom like a pneumonitis, kind of like allergy. Uh, 
inflammatory symptoms, but it is due to the hypersensitivity. So like more allergy. Okay. So we'll say this condition like a ILD only, of course, those who have answered, answered really well, ILD. But if we have to be a little more specific, we can say that hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis, in my opinion. Okay, so this was the two set I got for you, two case history for learning. So with this, thank you and all the best. If you have any query, you can ask me. And don't ask anything from the basics, ask from this topic only. See you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think this. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be reading your chat box. If you have any question, please. Nice. Yes. Okay. I wanted to give you certain more cases, but I would like you to get uh, how we can interpret small airway obstruction. I told you, you have to uh, ask the question. Small airway obstruction. Again, it could be because of two reasons, as I told you. Yes, Upasanaji, you can ask the question. You, you could have a, a two reasons. It could be because of the uh, space narrowing or due to a lot of secretion, or it could be the spasm. Okay, so we have to find out what is the problem. So depending upon your this one, we have to see. It's not only PFT will be thing. PFT is one of the very clear test where we, you can find out, yeah, what is the problem, okay? So small airway things, we have to find out why it is getting, that depends upon completely on history. You see, even the case histories I presented you, it was with history. I did not bring just simply a report and saying you that, yes, tumors in upper way can, can you so flu? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, Upasanaji, just wait. I will definitely show you the tumors like how uh, actually I I got little uh, in lung cancer DLCO decreases. You can only tell me lung cancer what happened, how it can decrease. Variety of explanation into that. Uh, yeah, uh, but the question she asked me about this, <clears throat> uh, like how upper airway uh, like a uh, area it can matter. Just a sec, I'll let you know how the flow volume loop actually work there. In lung cancer also, I'll let you know what happens in general. Uh, upper airway pressure, okay. Say for example, if there is a extra thoracic problem, okay, what will happen? Extra thoracic problem. It is a normal inspiration, expiration, right? So what will happen in extra thoracic problem? Not intra flow volume, what will happen? This particular thing will reduce, inspiration will reduce, and see this curve will be like this, somehow like this. This will be reduced and this also will be reduced. This is the problem of the extra thoracic problem, okay? But when it is an intrathoracic problem, and why it is happening, if you want to understand more, it is because more of the pleural pressure area. See, very simple. The lung, suppose two lung is there like this, and extrathoracic problem is not allowing the lung to have a better compliance. Okay, so inspiration get decreased, and then expiration also can't have a proper play to. Before that only it get collapse. Clear? But if it is an intrathoracic problem, we have to find out what she asked one of the uh, person very nicely, she asked that. So that uh, how lung cancer uh, actually matters for the DLCO, but that was different. What I'm saying you DL, uh, that's the flow volume, how will it work? It depends upon upper airway obstruction where it is happening, okay? So upper airway obstruction, definitely, it will be creating problem even in this case, flow volume loop, if you see, uh, if it is an intrathoracic problem rather than the extrathoracic, that definitely this also will go down and this part also will come down. So there won't be any PEFR actually in intrathoracic upper airway obstruction. It won't happen. Did you get my point what I'm saying you? It won't happen because you see, is there any upper airway obstruction? How the PFR will be attached? PFR is not actually... Uh, uh, it cannot be uh, coming to the reality, how it will be coming into the reality. It is not possible to bring into the reality. If you have any uh, thing like, uh, 
what I'm saying you, whether you are understanding or not, that's a different thing. But I want to learn from you how the PFR will work here. It is not possible to work. It's not possible to work properly. Upashana ji, did you get my answer? So we have to clarify what kind of uh, actually excess surfactant and mucus can cause both obstruction and what should be considered it. Okay, excess surfactant. Uh, how the surfactant, I saw a report where the downslope ends, downslope ends ahead of inspiratory loop. I have not seen such kind of report, but but as you are saying, I will buy that. It may be possible. So as I told you, you asked uh, like upper airway obstruction. I told you extra uh, intrathoracic and extra thoracic. Extra thoracic, it could be like this. Okay. And intrathoracic, it could be like this. Okay. There is no PFR is normally possible in intrathoracic airways because how will the PFR will be there? Okay. That is the one thing. And apart from that, uh, uh, you asked uh, one question. Uh, how the excess surfactant and mucus can release can cause both obstructive and restrictive problem. What should be considered? It? We have to consider according to other reports also, not just PFR. We have to consider even according to the uh, reports from uh, what we say from uh, uh, other reports like uh, like ABZ. Very very important to understand ABZ, and then we have to understand the normal volumetric measurements is parametry okay so it's not only that pft we have to consider this but dlco will play a very important role in this kind of thing what you have asked the question today <clears throat> what you have asked the question today about this uh, i think sapna ji huh? so miss sapna you have asked the question about the mucus release and everything mucus release that definitely means it has nothing to do with say for example if this is the alveoli terminal bronchial and you have a proper alveoli and you are saying there is a mucus release so say for example there is a bronchiectasis okay so it has nothing to do with the surface area okay so dlco may not change dlco may not change so in that case we have to find out of course right from the blood other things also but if it is a more 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 and more mucus problem so what happened exactly the more mucus problem epp is not attend generally so this goes for spasm Okay, so DLCO may not change in this case because DLCO definitely depends upon the surface area. If surface area is intact, DLCO may not change. Okay, now you asked about how to decide about the restrictive and uh, uh, obstructive disorder. Of course, is there any blockage like this? We have to say it is an obstructive disorder. Now, restrictive disorder, it all depends upon the total lung capacity. If you see the total lung capacity for these people, we, uh, we have to see whether it's a low or it is a high or normal. If it is a high obstruction, if it is a low restriction, very simple, I'm telling you. If it is a normal, then we have to see other things like forced vital capacity. Okay. So, these all the, that's the reason I told you, if you go through that uh, proper analytical, uh, what we say, algorithm, you will be able to uh fill it properly and then there was one very good question uh how cancer affects that but i want to know from you the lung tumor what kind of lung tumor you are saying as uh one miss upasana asked me about uh, upper airway kind of problem so upper airway see this is the intrathoracic right i told you no so inspiration is there there is no pfr there is expression again so is there any kind of tracheal tumor or tracheitis or any sort of that tumor in the upper airway the flow volume loop will behave like this. Will behave like this, hundred percent. But if it is, if you say me, where is the tumor? Like suppose somebody has a tumor in the main bronchus. In that case, in that case, hundred percent, the uh, uh, this will go different. Uh, this total, uh, this test only will go different. Okay. So okay, lower lobe. Well, lower lobe. Hundred percent. If there is a lower lobe, uh, since you have asked me the question, so I am telling you. Otherwise, this was not the 
topic today there was something called pulmonary ventilation okay there is something called alveolar ventilation and so one gentleman asked me about the dead space area now this three thing if you correlate please look pulmonary ventilation i may have 6000 ml per minute right <clears throat> 6000 ml pulmonary ventilation in general but alveolar ventilation may drop up to 4000 right why it is dropping first of all because of that anatomical normal anatomical dead space area and now those areas which are involved into the tumor activity which is not able to have a proper breathing uh, right now proper re respiration process is not happening the physiologically that is getting dead also right so we have to find out what is the alveolar to pulmonary ventilation ratio if alveolar ventilation ratio is decreasing that means it is it is a problem in the certain part right tumor part so in those areas total lung capacity if you see that also will be decreasing that also will be decreasing it won't behave like a increasing one hope i'm clearing i have cleared it somebody asked me about the how fever affects pft i mean fever is a symptom not a disease so i will not be able to tell you that how will it affect it depends upon what kind of condition has underlying condition has created fever suppose somebody has a pneumonia pneumonia of say for example covid after covid at higher stage okay and then person become normal so but he keeps getting some time fever because of his weakness he keeps he because what happened the pulmonary fibrosis has happened okay so if pulmonary fibrosis has happened that means the compliance has reduced compliance has reduced right compliance means the stretchability of the lung has reduced so elasticity of the lung has reduced the compliance of the lung so what is happening elastic tissue is getting into fibros so of course the vital capacity will be less right so we have to find out the fever is because of what reason and accordingly we have to see the pft any other question anybody has manikandan ji thank you thank you so much manikandan ji for joining thank you pasna ji yes uh, my yeah well um uh, uh, all of you uh, especially who is from the india i want to tell you that uh, our my rehab academy has come up with a new project called my rehab care and in the chat box you could see that few of you would have encountered this my rehab care it is a purely gps enabled and app based digital practice platform and we are giving absolutely at no cost okay how do you have to do it you have to search mrc associate in play store of the of the android phone or those who are using apple phone iphone can can search the same into the app store okay so once you search it you will you will download it once you are downloading it it will be asking you email and id to get inside okay you have to sign up into that why i am telling you to do that because you know suppose you are in uh, hyderabad okay you are in uh, begum pet of hyderabad and you have certain very important home cases nearby some 5 km you have to go ahead in the evening the person who will be searching nearby the 5 km area if your gps is on and your app is on you will be seen in the list depending upon your neuro rehab speciality okay so that is the only not just for home care it is even for the clinic it is even for the uh, online so everything if you have a clinic please register into it so once you sign up that application you have to just give your name qualification if you can download your uh, if you can upload your uh, pan card or aadhar card for identification our back end team will verify properly in 48 hours and get back to you so those who are practicing in the india uh, please uh download it and we will be coming back to you how you have to use it bangalore we are starting the phase 1 very soon for physiotherapy so it is for the right from the ambulance to plastic surgery everything is available through this platform okay well uh for certificate there is a code it is a just a sec the code will be shared i'll, I'll be typing also i think sir will share the code also i will also type it just a sec there is a code call pft321 pft321 yeah see the, it has been shared kindly go through this 
just type this code and send to whatsapp to 9066990059 your favorite for, uh, mra number and 24/7 in your service those who have any issues can mail us can write mail to us and you have any suggestion please give a feedback thank you mohammed ji you have uh, once you have downloaded you can just sign up and can give it uh, your profile will come to our backend team they'll see and then they'll verify and we'll send you even the using video how you have to use it proper using video so you will be able to do that no worries and this is absolutely uh, free of cost okay so it, this code is valid up to certain time only so kindly i did not get my mra rehab id number oh i didn't get you what you are telling okay you can just tell me personally also thank you sapna ji code is uh, dr rajiv code is uh, going on rajveer okay code is uh, already shared on the screen you can see pft321 pft321 all caps you have to send to 9066 9900059 okay once you share this code the certificate link you will get it you can download from there no worries okay and uh, you have any uh, confusion about pft or something kindly see lot of cases once you see the cases you will be able to understand much more clearly as she told like she has seen the expression goes you know little ahead of inspiration i have not seen but it happens it happens it may happen the more expiration if that time they tell the technician says you have to expire well they'll be doing more expiration but in that case also sometimes the graph may go haywire okay well those who have downloaded can definitely contact this number uh can just send the users video will be given even in the group thank you for joining everyone it was a wonderful always to talk to you people continue thank you thank you sonam ji thank you kashif ji thank you so much thank you so much then uh, with uh, permission from ceo sir uh, we are going to wind up thanks for joining